There is a topic where I can guarantee this concerns each and every one of you in this room today. It is money. But while we like to have money, or <laughs> even better, a lot of money, we don't usually talk much about it. Well, fasten your seatbelts. Because for the first time, money has actually become a fascinating subject. Something so exciting that they would even let somebody stand up and talk about it at TEDx. So, what's going on? In fact, a global revolution has just started. And it goes by the name of FinTech. This term was made prominent by The Economist in a special issue last year, and um, Google search volumes have gone through the roof ever since. So what's going on? FinTech is short for finance and technology, and it basically means reinventing the whole way we do, we deal with money, with banking, in a completely new way, based on today's technology. What does that mean? Well, let's run a little experiment, right here, right now. I need a volunteer from the audience, somebody. <laughs> here, the lady in the second row, what's your name? Angelica, Angelica. thank you very much. Um, Applause for Angelica. <laughs> Congratulations, you actually don't have to do anything. So um, you'll just earn um, 50 Swiss francs just for your cover courage for uh, participating, and you'll uh, get the money right away. There's, there's only one problem. I just realized that I didn't bring enough cash with me this uh, morning. So I just need to walk to the nearest bank branch, um, get some money from the ATM, and I'll be back in a... No, might be a bit uh, dry for the rest of the audience. Um, I could also take out my laptop and send it to you um, from my online bank account. But I also didn't bring my tent generator. And apart from that, today is Saturday, so the bank is closed anyway. So they'll start sending you the money on Monday, so you'll probably get it by Thursday. Mm. That's a bit of a bummer. Now, fast forward to this new fintech world. In this world, both of us would own a revolutionary new and powerful device called a smartphone. And with the smartphone, I could send you the money right away here from the stage, and you would have received it in a minute from now. And if you don't yet have a mobile um, first banking account, you could actually open up right now here in the TEDx Auditorium if you're not too loud. This is what FinTech is generally aiming to do. Thinking about how we can redesign our banking experience with today's technology. And if you think about it, and if you look at the bigger picture, the internet, the smartphone, they've already reshaped and disrupted entire industries. In travel, we use Booking.com and Airbnb. We don't walk to the nearby travel agent office to book our stay. If you want to watch videos, we stream them online on YouTube or Netflix. We don't drive to the nearest video store anymore to borrow some DVDs and take them home. And by the way, if you younger folks uh, in the audience wonder what video stores have actually been, um, <laughs> chances are you would just um, look it up on Google and not take out your little pocket encyclopedia. <laughs> So what about banking? Well, isn't it a bit ironic that I could order a full-size plasma TV in the morning on my smartphone, have it delivered the same day by Amazon, but it takes almost a week until Angelica gets her 50 Swiss franc? But I got some good news for you, because the future of finance has now arrived, even in the technologically emerging markets of Western Europe. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. This is how most of us are used to dealing with money. No matter if you want to save, want to invest, want to borrow, maybe you want to send money internationally, we would turn to our trusted bank, either online or walk to the bank in some cases. But now, the same trend that has already appeared in other industries, as we've seen before, um, has now also arrived in banking, in the industry of money. So now there's an alternative. Numerous startups have appeared which provide services 
really specialized, and they often do it faster, cheaper, more convenient than the traditional bank. When I shared all of this with um, my friend Jenny a couple of weeks ago, she in the end looked at me and said, well, then, you know, I mean, if this is all that great and wonderful and awesome and faster, cheaper, better, <laughs> why isn't everybody using it already? I mean, I've hardly heard of anybody who actually uses this stuff, right? <laughs> I think she has a point there. So the next week, I passed this question on to a friend, Dom, who's um, working in London for a fintech company. And Dom said, <laughs> well, you know, Daniel, sometimes I'm reminded of the history of cars. Cars. So the automobile was invented back in 1887. But it took more than 30, 40 years until they finally reached the majority of the cities, although they were faster in the long run, cheaper and more durable than those horse carriages. But people just <laughs> seem to like their horses. And so I just think people today like their bags. <laughs> well, I think he has a point there. And like in those days where people would have warned you of the severe health risks if you drive at breathtaking speed of more than 15 kilometers an hour, like in those days, there are voices that would warn you to use any of those um, fintech providers or for Angelica to open up this mobile bank account. What do banks actually think about this trend? Are they even taking it seriously? Turns out they do. Silicon Valley is coming. Those were the famous words of Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, one of the largest and probably most admired banks in the world. And what he meant was that hundreds of startups are there tackling those profit pools of banks and becoming a real challenge over the years. His conclusion, however, was not to just ignore them or even fight them to death, but to learn from them in some ways, and in other ways, even partner up with them. I want to leave you with this picture, referring to the CEO of Deutsche Bank, von Krein, who actually said and predicted even more radically, in 10 years from now, we won't have any cash anymore. So just imagine, we would meet again in 10 years from now. We no longer carry around any cash or credit cards, let alone checkbooks. When we jump off the self-driving bus, the ticket is paid for automatically. We walk down the streets and we just quickly catch up with our virtual financial assistant, Alexa. Um, she lets us know that all bills are being paid for, monitored until the end of the month. Um, you got some excess cash and you can just approve your tax receipts, which are already prepared. You decide to do it later on your smartphone. But it's a hot day, so you feel a bit thirsty. You just walk into the nearest store, grab a bottle of cool water, walk out again. Payment is happening in the background. Then you run into Angelica, who already made a fortune out of her 50 Swiss francs by <laughs> investing in automated robo-advisory, which probably you wouldn't even know because in 2026, we still don't talk much about money. In fact, less than ever. Because money, finance, just faded into the background somehow. It simply works for us. It leaves us with more time for what actually matters to us, what we enjoy doing. Because after all, there are more important things in life than money. <laughs> Thank you.